Ladies and gents, top of the morning or bottom of the morning, depending on which part of the morning you decide you identify with. Either way, welcome once again to Story Dive. We have just left the station once more, and we have wonderful things to talk about today. Uh, for those who are new to Story Dive, this is basically just a kind of a deep deep dish dive into the realm of storytelling in all its forms and mediums and genres. Epic and witty and funny as it is, we just love stories. I oh, yeah. am Kai and I'm joined with my co-host as usual, Logan. Oh yeah, deep dish time. Oh yeah. Makes me, makes me hungry. You make it sound rather <laughs> sensual. Maybe it is. Or, or hungry. You never hungry. know. Yeah, we're going to move to a different topic on that. <laughs> you never know. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, we want to get started right into this content today. Uh, we are talking a lot about... Actually, I can't get into it too much right off the bat because it'll ruin some of the appeal. But uh, I did want to start with our other segment that we like to do. Yes. Uh, and that is a new segment we're trying. I, I don't know if it has a name yet still, but we, call it we the essentially are challenging each other to be able to... Story of the week. Story there of the we week. go. So uh, as I am the majority host today, and Logan is the co-host. He's kind of responsible for that story of the week. So I am going to give him the floor. Uh, you have about five to ten minutes. Yeah. Give us your best shot at a story. This is just to well, kind of enhance our skills week by week, see how we improve. Yeah, well, so this is actually a story I've told before. I wanted to tell it here on the podcast because I thought it fit the topic of today, which is going to be mysteries. Um and I thought it would go kind of with it. This is a story, it's a true story from back in high school, and it's called The Invisible Man. Um, so I thought I'd, I'd uh, include okay. it here. I like where this is going. Yeah. So back in high school, so I moved here to Utah, where I live, and I moved from Georgia um, here in the U.S., and I, when I moved to Utah, I had no friends, which sounds very sad. And it was sometimes, but it's a normal thing to move somewhere and not know anybody. Um, so over the years, I made a small group of friends. It took a, took a while, but uh, it, I think it was like my junior year in high school. And it's weird because I, I was the kid who would sit in the corner and play on their DS. I didn't really talk to people or confront people or go out to like make friends or go on dates or anything. I kind of just kept to myself, played my games, went home, rinse and repeat. Um, and eventually I found some friends who, you know, I got along with and they would kind of include me in their, their uh, shenanigans, if you will. So uh, it, it, this story is really funny because uh, it involves like me and, and my small little friend group. And it was one day during lunch. Okay. So keep in mind, only like I honestly, I feel like nobody knew who I was besides my friend group, and uh, they were like one of my friends was like, "Man, I really want to play soccer. I really want to play soccer." Uh, he was super into soccer, and so we were like, "Okay, uh, where do we get a soccer ball?" And he was like, "Well, they have soccer balls in the gym, but we're not allowed to go into the gym during lunch. Which during lunch they would close the gym off, turn off all the lights. Nobody was allowed to go in there." Um, and he really wanted soccer ball. He says like man, I, let, let's see if the gym's unlocked. Because I don't know why, but my friend, he, uh, let's just call him Jim. He, Jim really just, I don't know, he, his, his, his reasoning was just never there. He would just do stuff, even if it was like against the rules. He didn't care. Um, but I was just like, oh, this is interesting. So he goes and he like tries to open the gym, locked, right? And we're like, okay, let's go around to the side. And we go around to the side door and one of our other friends is coming out of the locker room. Because lunch had just started and he was like still, you know, leaving. Uh, he was probably in there for practice or whatever. And he, he was leaving and he was like, oh, you guys need a soccer ball? 
like, here, I'll let you guys in. So he like lets the three of us into the gym and we're not supposed to be there. And we're like sneak into the back, right? Yeah. Because that's where all the balls are and all the, the like locker rooms are all in the back corner. And we're almost to the back of the gym. And we like we hear someone yell, hey, hey, what are you doing in here? And we turn around and the coach is like <laughs> running towards us from like the other entrance. And we're like, oh, shoot, we've been caught. So we're like bail out of the mission, guys, bail. And we all ran out the back door because we were close to the back door, which went outside. Okay. And we all book it out of the back door and we're running uh-huh. and we're like, guys, this is it. We're going to get freaking detention or whatever else and we run around to the front and the four of us just walk in like we just got back from mcdonald's or something and we just, we're just walking around all nonchalant like you know we're just the cool kids doing whatever you know nothing happened because i don't think the guy saw us right we were like like we were literally as we were walking around we're like do you think he like saw who we were and we're like no there's no way like we, we ran out pretty quick and this is the craziest part because then i go on with the rest of my day and i have like math and study hall and like nothing right just silence and i leave and i go home and i'm like that was i, I guess we got away with it but then this is what i figured out the next I day guess. is the next day i meet with my friends at lunch and they're like guys like i got pulled out of class yesterday for doing that gym thing and like they got they got punished for it. i think they they like had to make up hours or something um but it's funny because the three of uh, the other three guys that I was with all got pulled out of class, but I didn't get pulled out of class. And it, it was just crazy because they, they no actually they went back and they looked at the tapes, right? They actually looked at the freaking tapes and apparently I wasn't on them either that or like, this is, this is why, cause what? I don't know. I like, they literally never talked to me about it. So I'm like, I don't know, dude. So like ever, like from then on, they, they would call me the invisible man. Cause it's like, no, it just, n- you nobody actually don't even show up on camera. Yeah. And like, like, I don't know, like I didn't know anybody at school or anything. Like, I don't know. I felt like I, I felt like I was invisible sometimes, which you could take as a, uh, kind of like a sad insecurity thing. But like, I, I don't know. I don't know. After that story, I kind of felt like it was like a superpower. I was like, dude, I, <laughs> I, I can do whatever I want. You know, I, I, it's not like I went around and did, did things uh after that that were like good i was gonna that, i but... straight up was just about to ask if you tested that theory no, any no, no. farther than that or you just left it and i might have this power no it's just so funny how like they all got caught on tape but i didn't and i was with them the whole time so anyways that's my uh that's my little story uh so yeah kind of a mystery in a way like I don't yeah, know how they didn't the catch me. The mystery of the invisible man. I don't know how they didn't catch me. And they probably have, they, they're probably still wondering who the heck the other guy was or if there was another <laughs> guy. A coach just like scrolling through his feed from <laughs> upwards of a decade ago. He's like, oh, I knew there was a fourth. Yeah. I knew. He listens to the podcast. He's like, he was the fourth guy. The yeah, it was him. Um, or into your apartment building with a soccer ball. It's like ready to square down. Yeah, but yeah, anyways, um, there you go. Story of the week. What a story. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that story. It's yeah. a good one. Uh, it's a good insight into your, yeah. your childhood was, shenanigans. I feel like very, I didn't get into it enough. It was a very uh, exciting day. Because, you know, not all the days were that exciting. Uh, right. But, <laughs> yeah, sure. So yeah. That one had me, had me going for a bit. So. Well, lads and lasses, it is now time. We are talking about, as was mentioned before, mysteries. The mystery genre in all of its forms. Uh, We actually have a mystery we need to solve, my graceful detective companion, Logan. Yes. That is, what makes mysteries so good i feel like I the mystery a, of the mystery i need a detective name i feel like like logan's worth or something logan's worth <laughs> all right sounds good and who are you you're just a all right Kai? Chap logan's worth uh i've been called kaistifer before by Ooh, some friends detective. I bet that, kaistifer that and logan's worth dude that that's it right there that's I'd, it right there i just need a magnifying glass 
Dude, is, there that, you go. is that actually a detective thing? Do people actually <laughs> use magnifying glasses? I'm sure they did at one time. <laughs> I don't know if it's uh, still like you carry a magnifying. <laughs> I don't think people walk around and. I don't know. I, I guess I've never met a detective in real life, yeah, times, but I imagine they wouldn't be wearing trench coats with, with the bowler hat things and magnifying <laughs> glass. Maybe yeah. at one time they did. Yeah, that's why they were there. So yeah, time, either way, Logan's worth. Times are different, bro. Like I can't even believe people used monocles in the past. Like that's just crazy to me. Yeah, yeah, and they used like people that, used to watch musical theater with binoculars. Yeah, yeah, that's like, a mystery, bro. That's a mystery to me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's a it's a wonderful topic for another time. We are on the scouring of clues to determine why it's so good. I don't know, you might have initial thoughts on this, Logansworth. So do share, my young lad. Yes. Um so I did some digging before the episode and I discovered that I actually really do like mysteries. Cause when you told me we were gonna be talking about mysteries today, I was like I don't know. I don't know squat about mysteries. Like, I don't. I don't watch mystery content. But then I sat there and I thought about it. I'm like, actually, I have consumed a lot of mystery content, and a lot of it is some of my favorite. Um, because I, I don't know if I mentioned it here on this podcast. But one of my favorite things about, like, I don't know, consuming content or media or entertainment, um, and or just in general, one of my favorite things in life is discovering. Right. I love finding things out and like, like solving puzzles and putting the pieces together, um, which, you know, could involve exploring an area in a game I've never been to exploring, uh, like going on a hike down like somewhere where it's like all just completely new and mysterious, uh, or whether or not it's like actually connecting some pieces to like some lore or like finding out like the answer to a puzzle. Like I love all that stuff. So um, I feel like there is a lot to talk about here because I feel like mysteries are more than just, you know, uh, true crime or murder mystery movies, you know? Indeed. In fact, you bring up a clue I have discovered in my own researches. Um, Christopher casually pulls out a, a parchment to <laughs> flips it open. <laughs> I have here a list of different types of subgenres that have come from mystery. But before that, I must ask you, where do you think mystery stories fit in the realm of all kinds of different genres? So where does it pair up to an aforementioned sci-fi genre? Well, sci-fi? Wait, are you asking me sci-fi specifically? No, no, like... In, uh, of all the genres that exist hitherto up to okay. this point, um, where does it stack alongside any other genres? It okay. So I have a couple answers for this because I would say typically. Okay, okay. How how deep do you want me to go into this? Because I actually thought about this a little bit. Um, do you want me to just give one example? Uh, I, I don't dig wanna... deep, Logan's dig word. Di okay, dig deep. I'm digging deep. Okay, not too deep, but tactically deep. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I think that there are a lot of different ways for it to present itself. Um, but I would say the most popular version of a mystery story is, in my own words, who done it. So essentially, mm. it's e like either a crime or a murder. Most of the time, it's a murder. Someone dies, and they have to figure out who did it. Mm, yes. Um, that is, I think, the most. So when you say which genre, it's like the, I think, crime genre. So in terms of like cop shows or, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's the majority. I mean, like there's like prison shows and, uh, you know, I, I don't know if there's like, like I, murder mystery might, I think it's its own genre actually, but um, that's what I would say. And then I would say right below that is horror. And I kind of want to get into horror a little later. Or whenever, um, I just don't know where you, where you're taking us. Indeed. Well, uh, horror is not actually a listed subgenre of mystery. It's Ooh. actually its own entire genre, at least in the echelons of those yeah. that would that's, call themselves storytellers. That, that's why I want to get into it later because actually I have a lot to say about horror as a mystery genre. So, 
intriguing. Yeah. Um, well, this is the clue. I, I flip open a, a monocle and, eek, 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 you know, like wipe it <laughs> off with my trench coat. Nice, and nice. Flick it up to the thing, and the, it says here on uh, this parchment that mystery as a fictional genre is bested in popularity only, only by romance. Which what? means mystery is oh. the number two genre oh. of all storytelling. Really? Really? Yes, That's indeed. That's crazy. Now, according to my findings, this is probably because mystery as a, as a genre splits into so many subgenres that many stories fit under the technical confines of what we would call a mystery story. So, uh, says here, specifically, as we try and define what exactly a mystery is, a mystery story, as told to us by the, uh, you know, the mystical Google, whoever <laughs> this is. Dude, you have the mystical uh, Google? The mystical Google of, of the future. I've been searching for years for that. I heard it's a tablet that can answer all my questions found in the depths of smoggy city-filled countries. Indeed. It works incredibly fast. In fact, according to this here source, mystery stories are defined specifically as a main character on a quest to solve a crime. Very specifically, mm. a crime. Interesting. So historically, uh, mystery stories began in the early 1800s, specifically in the year 1841, in the brush, foggy month of April, and was published by the author Edgar Allan Poe, who published the story Murders in the Rue Morgue. Okay. Of a modern, uh, at the time, I guess if we are in that time, of the popular magazine, I'm sure you've read many issues, Graham's Ladies and Gentlemen's Magazine. I, it's very posh. I great, don't, great grammar. I Excellent believe, wordplay. I don't believe I've read that one. <laughs> Neither have I. But uh, I can assume that this is was a, a wonderful story. From there, the genre evolved, and but it mostly became popular Interestingly enough, as institutionalized police presence in traditional society was became more of a a thing. So up to this point, I'm not sure there was any kind of institutionalized government body that was established as a police force of indiscriminate search for justice, if that makes sense. Before then, there were probably enforcers or bodyguards or knights or any kind of that kind of stuff. And I'm sure there was still justice to be had, but right around the 1800s is where this kind of institutionalized government-sanctioned search for justice became a real concept. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, that was kind of a lot. Yeah. Um... You're like saying the whole history of mystery. History of mystery, indeed. Yeah. And I, um, I have a little scroll here. Um, I found excellent. some evidence. A scroll, even. That it says on the scroll, it says... Wait, wait, brush it off. It has some ink oh, on it. Yes, too. yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, it has the word mystery on it, so I'm going to open it. Um, excellent. And it says here... What does it say, Logansworth? It says here a mystery... By definition, is something that is difficult or impossible to explain. So, how can you solve this mystery? It's difficult and impossible to explain. You made the word mystery. Yeah. A uh, mystery itself that's... is impossible to explain. And yet, reading that makes me want to solve it even more. Indeed. Indeed. This actually is one of the main draws of what I could understand is why mystery is so intriguing, is that humans are a curious creature. 
It's probably yes. been said <laughs> yeah. ad nauseum to every living person that has yeah. thought any deeper than rudimentary thinking is that we are a curious race. We're curious creatures. We love to solve problems. We love to invent new things and yeah. explore pieces of of reality that we haven't before. Yeah. Anything beyond our understanding is, I guess, would be classified under this realm of mystery. It's intriguing. Yeah, I I, I would say mystery, like, because yeah, I, I mentioned discovery, but like, honestly, my curiosity is one of my main driving forces, like, which is why it's hard these days when we have these tablets that tell us everything, because there's a lot of things in life that are no longer mysterious. You know, like we know everything about them. So it's, it's hard to find things that nobody knows or that nobody's done. Um, but, you know, I feel like making a mystery styled narrative is a way to kind of get that it, you know, like. Indeed. To, to experience uh, a timeline where you can kind of put yourself in someone else's shoes and experience something that you haven't, you know. And like give you that like wonder of like what the heck is going on <laughs> you know so. indeed uh in that vein i actually do believe that mystery there's there's a reason it's at the number two spot uh, yes. and is only bested by romance and i do think it's because unlike a lot of other genres it withstands the test of time in a way that others can't so going back to the comparison of of mystery to sci-fi sci-fi is amazing it, as as we mentioned before it will mm -hmm. blow your mind if you yeah. think too hard about it yeah and it is the exploration of introducing technology into a society and trying to kind of observe what the society would be able to do with that technology right mm -hmm. but as it stands lots of older Shows do have types of technology that would, at the time, be considered science fiction, of which now are a real thing. You know, uh, The Rocketeer, as an example, is a story of, it's actually a really kind of a superhero story, but it's an older story. It was a comic book that was eventually a, a movie about a guy with a jetpack. And the jetpack was kind of the the technology that was so interesting it was revolutionary at the time no one had thought of strapping a rocket to someone's back before uh, who would do that but now, now we have things like bionic suits or people there are people working on that kind of technology therefore the rocketeer starts to delve a little bit more into it it's still magical in the way it, it portrays it but the more we gain that kind of technology the less adventurous that technology yeah. in story becomes as a as a form of sci-fi yeah and yeah it, i think it's a problem because whereas th there there's some sci-fi movies that like they're like this is such a cool idea and then like it ends up not only does it end up being real but like it ends up being better than what they did or maybe like when you go back and watch it it's like that's not even accurate you know what i mean it's like they th they didn't even know what they were talking about you know because like we have like a better iteration or uh it's like they're using a piece of tech that like we know that has certain drawbacks to it or something that like the movie doesn't showcase or whatever. So it's, it, there's like that disconnect where it's like, not only is it something that we've already accomplished in life, but it's not even like accurate. Indeed. 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 But with that, uh, that is something they used to say. Indeed, uh, <laughs> I think we still say it. Like maybe a little bit. We still, I say <laughs> it a lot. I might have gotten it from that. Either it's, way, it's a good word. It's a good word. It's a, it's indeed. It is a good word. I know people use it more often. That's a freaking mystery that we need to solve. Indeed, Logan's worth. Okay. But we must focus <laughs> on the mystery at hand, which is All why right. mysteries are so good. Yes. So. As opposed to the realm of sci-fi, mysteries kind of are timeless. They, it's the same yes. general concept uh -huh. over and over again, just yep. explored in a different way, but really delves into, and like, as you said, scratches that itch of, yeah. uh, yes. as it were, the deep dish, the, the human curiosity. 
Yeah. The deep itch. The deep itch. Oh man. Um I yeah. think we're starting to make a uh villain. Oh yeah, the deep itch. He's the a... the culprit. Uh, the suspect currently is our deep itch of curiosity. He spawns he spawns bees. And they he spawns make, bees. And they, and they make you have the deep itch for a while, you know. Indeed. A truly in, horrifying indeed. Yeah. criminal. Yeah, yeah. Must so, be brought to justice. So yeah, you're saying that like sci-fi like over time loses its luster but mysteries are always good like it doesn't matter how old they are like they sort of kind because of, i do think slap. there are mysteries that there are mysteries that definitely age uh sure but as, as I all feel like, things do you know not everything can age well because times are different it's true different. it's true but i'm with you i mean but i can mysteries... go back and, i can go back and watch a movie or a, play a game that was released 30 years ago and it hits just as hard a lot of the time Right, right. That is very true. But uh, as was mentioned before, uh, these mysteries were able to kind of be told and reinvented over and over again. And it actually led to the invention of something we are very familiar with as a society. Uh, this brings me to a next clue. I reach into my trench coat and I pull out this like dusty as just caked in dust like every time i swish it it like leaves an after image oh, of dust it's a paperback <laughs> novel oh, uh, the, you know the size you know exactly the size that i'm talking about the ones that you find like either in the library or in like the checkout yeah. lines uh -huh. of of trader joe's and stuff like that oh, it's yeah. It's one of those. This is like this novel, right? A, a paperback novel. I switch that thing out and I'm like, behold, the dime novel. These things used to go for a dime. You could purchase them at a dime and be able to just read them. And they were there were so many of them. And most of them, if not all of them, had a especially when they were coming out through the 1900s and stuff like that, mainly revolved around mysteries and romance which oh. interestingly enough is kind of still where those right. dime novels are at most yeah. of them are either romance or some kind of mystery somewhat but that product was invented because of this genre mm -hmm. yeah that is interesting highly intriguing yes but because of I'm that glad. as we aforementioned there are so many different subgenres, and i want to cover each one briefly at least the ones that I were able to find yes. were kind of the main genre. Any other subgenres sort of fill into these other ones. Yeah. First of which, uh, I don't know, you seem to have a thought here, Logan Zorth. I see you stroking your, your soul patch beard. Oh my gosh, I actually was. In thought. Um, uh, that's kind of crazy. Um, yes. Uh, well, so you have subgenres, but I have... I would say a list of, you know, every different kind of mystery story. Like, so every, every way that I think mysteries have been presented in a narrative. Um, so for instance, London's beard. So, every, <laughs> no, every I th I, story? I think you can categorize uh, mystery stories into four different categories. There's like four different kinds. Um, ah. so I can, if you want, you could, uh, I could go over those and then we could go through the subgenres and kind of like talk about how they fit into those. If you want, um, excellent. We shall line them up. You <laughs> shall tell them it might just be that one of your genres lines up with one of mine. If yes. they don't line up, it's off to the yard with them. Yeah, dude. They got to walk the plank of. Uh, stank, dude. Okay. Um, a plank of stank that we all know exists <laughs> in the 1800s yeah. Scotland Yard. Yeah, the, the the deep itch has one in his secret lair. Um, the deep itch has a place in the Scotland Yard. Do you know what the Scotland Yard is? <laughs> no, I, it's a mystery to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's what that's what Scottish people refer to as jail. If oh, you take him to the geez. yard. Well, I mean, you know, after, <laughs> your, after he got arrested for being a villain. The, what he, ah, that's, yes. it's Deep super... itch. <laughs> Established a hierarchy of criminals inside yes. his, in the uh, yard. Yep. He, and... the, the Sinister Eight, because we can't. The Sinister Eight. We can't rip off Spider-Man too hard. Device. Yeah. The um, Plank of Stank. Okay, okay. Um, let's. 
Let's go over this list. Um, so I, I mentioned the first one, which was Who Done It. I think that's the most Who Done It. That's the most presented I do have one. That on here. Like you could literally play the game of Clue, which is like the, the ultimate version of Who Done It. Um, and then, it's like Who Done It, the board game. I would except say except for Who Done It is the board game. So. I because okay, so I, I I don't know if this list is set in stone. I want your thoughts on it. Um, I would say the second most like used one. I I call it here a blast from the past which means some kind of mystery that is solved because of either you learn about something in history or there's like a flashback or whatever, right? Like um, this happens kind of a lot. like national treasure. Yeah. But like, for instance, cause it's a little different cause it's one thing for the character to go through it. And it's another thing for like the watcher too, right? Cause those are two different things that are, that's interesting about mystery is like sometimes the watcher knows things that the characters don't. And sometimes the characters know things that the watcher doesn't know, um, which is very interesting. Like the, uh, I think it's very important when you're writing stories to withhold information from the watcher uh, and from the characters and kind of balancing that out. But I would say that a blast from the past has to do with, you know, learning something about the world of the characters through something that happened in the past in that world. Um, so like, for in, like, I'm thinking about One Piece, obviously, because I love One Piece. There's a lot of flashbacks in that show where it's like someone will be like you'll be introduced to a character and you don't really understand why that character is the way that they are. And then it shows their backstory and you're like, this explains everything. Right. So it's like that's I'm not saying that that's necessarily a mystery genre thing, but it's like that is a mystery that is solved through history. So I do think that um, uh, you said, what was it called? National Treasure. That one is a good example of like, you know, they're like, I don't know what to do next. Uh, but I don't know if it's necessarily a blast from the past. It's more like, maybe, but maybe it is a little bit where it's like, if you find uh, like a tome or a book, you know, that explains something like, uh, spoilers for Stranger Things part four. Have you, have you seen the fourth season? Indeed. You know, you know that scene where I the, did it again. They, they I, go, don't, I say that all the time, don't I? <laughs> Uh, I don't. I think you've been saying it more this episode, honestly, and I don't think it's a it's indeed. Not, it's not a problem. Continue, uh, Logan's worth. Uh, you know, you know, in certain things in season four, when they go to the library and they're like doing all that research to find out about the guy who owned the house, you know, which ends up being what's his what's his name, like the skin, not 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 Skinwalker. It's uh, number zero, whatever. But he right. was well, and it, it even does the because that dude Stranger Things did it really well, where it showed that. What's what's his name? He has a name, doesn't he? Uh, like the uh, Tramadon Vesuvius, no, main no, bad no, guy no, 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 in no. Stranger Things. Listen, okay, we, I, I'm gonna solve this mystery right now using my tablet. We are jumping back to the wonderful realm of the Google. Um, Vecna, Vecna, I he was called, he has like a name though, right? Like, a. I don't know. I thought he had like uh, some kind of a name, like the nameless one or the 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 flesh eater or something. Like they called him something, you know, like in the D and D game. Okay, we're get, we're getting off topic here. Anyways, you know, you know how in season four they 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 do all that research in the library where they're using history in the world to discover what they're doing. So there's that, and then there's also at the same time they they freaking align that with a backstory of the guy with with uh the memories that Eleven's going through um where you're kind of learning about her past but then it's also explaining the villain's past and it's like that's i think the second best way or not second best way but the second um most used version of mystery and then i would say the third one i have here is the grass is greener which essentially is like when there's like when you're trying to get to a world that's supposedly a better place you know what I'm talking about? So I have down here uh, Maze Runner and The Giver and mm -hmm. Promise Neverland. Castle in the Sky is like that. Uh, when what? Castle in the Sky. Oh, okay. Studio I, Ghibli. I still need to see Castle in the Sky. Um, it, it's, it fits. It, it yeah, but you know what I'm talking about, the right? Margins, Where it's like they're yeah. trying to escape to a better world, but it's like you don't actually know if that world is better. In fact, sometimes it's not. In fact, a lot of the times... It's not, you know, so I would say that that's a third way of mystery. And then uh, I have down here, I can't remember, which is like, 
when the character has like amnesia, which I think would be a little bit, it's kind of an off branch of the blast of the past where it's like, I don't remember. And then they have to spend the whole story, like remembering who they are or what happened the night before. Like my favorite episode in uh, psych is the one where they all wake up, wake up uh, blackout drunk or from being blackout drunk. And they have to figure out what they did yesterday. Um, that's one of my favorite episodes. Ah, uh, indeed. Um, and then, and then yeah, and then I have all of the above. So, um, because some of them incorporate all of them, right? Um, so yeah. Uh, what so are your, what are your thoughts? These think... are elements of. I yeah. think these are all important elements that determine a good mystery story. Yes, I'm not sure that they're specifically genres, subgenres of well, the yeah, story. Other I than I wouldn't say that they're subgenres. It. I just thought that these were all the ways that mysteries present themselves in stories. I see. Yes. So, um, do, but do you think that they all classify? Because it's like technically anything's a mystery, right? Like you could make, like, like the like. Let's say like the outside being better. You know, like would that kind of classify as a mystery? Though, does that really fit the same vibe? I think that like... classifies more as a as an adventure. I but it's still a my mystery, beard, right? Like considerably. Sort it's, of. It's that wonderment, remember, like uh, you, like they're spending the whole time trying to figure out how to get there, and like if it's even a good place to go. Like you, you have all this wonderment, thinking about is this world everything that that it says it is, or you know. But maybe you're right. Like that's why I'm like maybe it's not. I would I would classify that more as an adventure with a mystery in it, not okay. necessarily a mystery genre. Because if you remember. Remember, the what makes a mystery story is a main character uh somewhere within the nature of the event has to solve a murder or other crime right, so does it have to be a crime though like what if somebody like left you a thousand dollars and you're like who did this that so i suppose could be a mystery but it no, but isn't it? it? It's like I think that's. It's, it's I all think about that might just finding be, out who did it. It's not going about back to, murdering somebody. It's. I think the character having to solve a crime of some sort is what makes it a mystery story. So, like, you need that dark element to it. Sort of. Yes. Like it it well, can't be a because, happy thing. So, a mystery story also has this element. It. It. It, there's a huge appeal to it in that there's uh, appeal to the human nature of the cosmic sense of justice against villainy. Okay. Pretty much every mystery story has some sort of villain that must be brought to justice in some manner. Even even like the most kid friendly kind of stories still have some sort of crime, like like Scooby Doo. They have all the at least the cartoons had monsters that would terrorize things and stuff like that and scooby-doo i think is an intriguing mystery story because it actually does fit into two separate subgenres, which is intriguing yeah let's go through the uh, subgenres. I'm, I'm interested okay so on the on the note of scooby-doo it does fit in the paranormal subgenre, and then also the uh mm. detective story subgenre because yeah, okay. it there still is monsters right and most of the time they're not real for some reason once or twice they are i think but um what ends up happening is it's almost advertised often as some sort of supernatural monster the the black knight has come back the the creepers come out of the ground and and they have to use their skills as detectives or investigators or as at least for them general do-gooders that may or may not be high of their mind and they are they eventually figure out the truth and that these people are actually criminals that are like embezzling something or yeah. or stealing something or wanting property for themselves or who knows whatever reason um that's what makes it an interesting mystery story is that every single time there's always some sort of villain that's why so the uh, now I can go through these subgenres now that yeah, I've yeah, ad yeah. advertised a few. So the first one is the caper. 
The caper. the caper is a story, a mystery story that typically involves a relatively large amount of humor. So lots mm. of psych episodes yes. could be considered a caper. I wouldn't yeah. consider psych in its entirety a caper. Right. I think that just most of the episodes can be handled. The Great Muppet Caper is an excellent example. <laughs> well, yeah, it's um, in the name. I, I haven't seen it, but it totally sounds like it would it would totally fulfill that genre it's just people solving a crime in but it's it's very lighthearted, very yeah uh okay. silly in yes. nature i mean the muppets themselves are like right. tripping over each other and somehow that trips the bad guy you yeah. know uh -huh. scooby-doo would be often considered the caper okay etc cetera, etc cetera. that means so it's that is checking three of the boxes is scooby-doo every genre at once uh not necessarily <laughs> because <laughs> there are some that it's not so the next subgenre that i have listed here is the detective story this is the classic whodunit that you kind of mentioned yeah or whodunits tend to fall into these this is your sherlock holmes this is your uh 007 kind of well maybe not 007 but uh your knives out the that kind of stuff yeah uh some some classical do-gooding investigator maybe quirky personality smokes a little too much uh drinks a little too much wine they were actually in oftentimes uh usually depicted as drunks which is interesting any interesting. kind of noir novel so like your classic 1920s um yeah private eye sepia like everything's in a brown look and they're like talking to themselves I, I smoked two cigars before <laughs> I came back to my senses. Oh my I looked out. Rain That's again. Such a crazy they, but genre. the rain. You don't see yes, it too much so anymore. No, it is kind of fallen away, but it did. It was it's it's included in the detective story. Yeah, so that's definitely. that's that genre. Yeah. The next one is similar, but it is a little different in in some ways. It's interesting. So the next one is a disability mystery where it's pretty much the same thing as a detective story, but the person solving the crime in some way has some sort of debilitating disability, basically. So this is Monk, mm. where he's a, an hey, excellent did, what, detective, what pretty much. What's it called? A disability mystery. No, but then what's the example you're bringing up? Oh, Monk. Monk, okay. I haven't heard of Monk. Monk. Maybe I have. Monk I... is uh, as Tony Shalhoub. It's it's a very it it's a it ran around the same time as Psych did. It's a little bit earlier than Psych, but it's a very popular detective show about Adrian Monk, who he's basically Sherlock Holmes, except for he's like scared of everything. He has so many hundreds of thousands of phobias and he's like a germaphobe. So he can't even pick up evidence because oh. it's so disgusting to him. But he's a good detective. He just has this. But he's an excellent detective. He's That's like crazy. incredibly smart. It's it's so funny. It's really good. You can honestly classify some of those as capers as well. Right, Highly right, recommended right. if you haven't watched Monk. But like, also if you've ever heard of Doctor House, that is yeah. technically considered a disability mystery because House himself okay. is like often with a cane, or I know in some cases he's in a wheelchair. It's just he also is incredibly smart with what he does. And there's there's always there's not always crimes to be solved. Sometimes there is crimes to be solved as they Yeah, well that's what I was trying to say. I'm trying. like I don't know if there has to be a crime. That's just I think the one of the best ways to immediately get that mystery going, you know. But so then maybe it is just monk and maybe not Doctor House, but it is important to recognize back to it that a mystery story or at least within the mystery genre of stories because you can have a story with a mystery in it but yeah. to have a mystery story it's usually there's tied to a crime of some sort yeah carrying on yeah. we must keep a pace going okay. i take off yes. my white glove and like oh, slap geez. you across oh. the knee with it <laughs> keep it going oh. logan's worth uh, focus. okay i'm focusing the next I'm the next subgenre is espionage now this is your 007, your Mission Impossible, mm. your the man from Uncle, 
that kind of stuff where yeah. it, it, the Kingsman, essentially these mystery stories. I've never actually watched the Kingsman. I just hear a lot of good things about right. it. Yeah. Either way, it's a mystery story where the crime is like almost worldwide kind of crime. So the people having to solve the crime are world renowned spies and, and yeah. agents and stuff like that. Double as James Bond is a legendary. He's not just a spy. He's a secret agent. That's like good at everything. He can disguise himself. He can Dude, blend about, in, wait, but he wait, can wait. also hear me out here. What about the Incredibles? Uh, you know, Mr. Incredible, bro, and he, like, flies to the island, and he, like, uncovers all that stuff about Kronos and, like, the world-ending plan. I would generally consider <laughs> a lot of superhero stories, even Incredibles, as mystery. Really? They have the mystery genre that you can tag to it. Well, ca- yeah, because I mean, it does have that crime. In, yeah, they're involved in villains who typically are doing crime, so... I mean, I would say that, like, the original superhero stories, Superman and Batman, were made by uh, DC, which originally was stood for Detective Comics. So yeah. I, I, would, you know, I would classify lots of superhero stories as, as mystery. That's true. I mean, I'm thinking about in Spider-Man for PS4, like, there's a lot of times when you're walking around and you're, like, looking at evidence for things. And you put something together. Yes, indeed. You you don't know yeah. that it's it's Doc Ock leading the whole thing. Yeah, until exactly. Or kind of the very end until it comes to life. And you might have a sense for what's happening, but you don't get all of the pieces until until the very end. Yeah, so. but it is interesting how. You, uh, yeah, okay. I know. I know. We're getting a little off topic, but like, yeah. Um, you know the whole. Superheroes will have to wait. Logan's worth. Yeah, superheroes and mysteries Flap are your more the other knee with the glove. Okay. Wa-pow. All right. I, uh, I was a, I was an adventurer just like you until I took a slap to the knee. <laughs> uh, the next subgenre now is a, paranormal. Now I'm a mystery. So these guy. <laughs> see what? Now I'm a mystery guy. I'm not an adventurer. I'm a mystery. Ah, uh, indeed. Yeah. Your knees weren't meant to handle too many slaps of <laughs> of the gloves. Yeah. Uh, so paranormal is the next subgenre. This is kind of your psych. It's it's interesting oh. that psych psych falls under similar things that Scooby Doo falls under, in that it's caper detective paranormal things, where. Under it's interesting because psych is like an inverse paranormal, but yeah, because of that, also then does classify it as paranormal because it's like psych is all about de supernaturaling the possibility of of the supernatural and crime because he's a fake the whole time. And yeah, that's what yeah. makes it so interesting. And yet, at the same time, he often does use supernatural tactics to try and explain away the the mystery, right. you know? Yes. Whereas I feel like a real paranormal would be something like Stranger Things, um, which I know Stranger Things might have yeah, other I would, genres. I would consider... It's like they're, on, they're trying to solve... I would consider Stranger Things as a mystery. Yeah, they're, they're trying to solve um, these mysteries that directly uh, pertain to like supernatural otherworldly stuff you know indeed so, so that's what you mean by paranormal like uh, uh know, stranger like... things kind of stuff generally yeah or or some kind of mystery involving the supernatural in some right. way uh you could consider like the story games until dawn and the man of medan as mystery-esque that yeah. involved the paranormal thing. But right. those also fall under the final subgenre, which is your thriller. Now, thrillers, it's intriguing because thrillers and horror are not the same thing. Horror yeah. can fall into a thriller. Yes. But m- thriller can just be its own thing. So thrillers are your Mission Impossible, your Hawaii Five O, your Jack Reacher, maybe your John Wick. I don't what, know if that's about, too much uh, of a mystery. Indi- Indiana Jones? Maybe. Yeah, I would consider that or, uh, uh, a thriller. The first yep. one that came to my mind was Natural Treasure, which we already talked about. But I Natural think Treasure would that be one's definitely a thriller to me. I think would, at least I think that would be a caper thriller, which is intriguing. 
Yeah, okay. That is intriguing. Um, so it's a caper thriller, but, but somehow a, still a mystery nonetheless. Right, yes. Well, thriller <laughs> is just a subgenre of mystery because the thriller subgenre involves a lot more action to what's happening. Uh, yeah. A lot of cool gadgets and stuff. I would, I would consider lots of Batman stories thrillers. Okay, yes. Okay. Um, as so, well as detective stories. So... So, so like your your mystery, mystery the interesting, right? The intriguing thing about this is that so many of the listed mysteries that I've mentioned can fall into multiple of these subgenres, and lots yeah. of these stories actually pre use these subgenres as like a weird subversion, like like Psych. What made Psych so interesting is it's not actually a paranormal show, but Sean. And Gus and generally anyone else involved in the in the charade have to solve the crime by making it a paranormal thing. Yeah, which is which is so interesting. It's like the the inverse of that, or like uh, as you mentioned before, Stranger Things was definitely a thriller, but it's also paranormal. It's also funny, and it does have. It's also. I, well, so funny and silly are two different things, I think, is a, an important distinction here. Yes. Because okay. Mission Impossible has funny moments, but I wouldn't consider it a caper. Right, but Psych is silly sometimes. Psych, psych is definite silly points. And you know? so is Scooby-Doo. Definitely silly. And Scooby-Doo is silly. And like the way that they come across these things oftentimes is by accident or... right. Uh, like through sheer luck, they happen to figure out the thing. They might not actually have any kind of uh, right. qualifications to be the mystery solver. Or they just yeah. like, <laughs> I mean, I happen to be at the right place at the right time. I'm thinking about like the scenes that are like Bugs Bunny esque, where they Scooby Doo and Shaggy like they take the villain and they're like, "Hey, yes, yeah, sit down in this chair, yeah, you know," and like they dress him up and they're like. Have this nice meal, yeah. and man, man, you know, exactly. and then they, and then they That's... get it again, and they get out of there. While the villain's like, "Oh, this is so nice of them," you know, and it's like, right, yeah, <laughs> it's like so... straight up Looney Tunes. <laughs> um, um, but those are the different subgenres, and within those subgenres, I have found another clue. Oh, let me hear it. Okay, so this, uh, within these subgenres, as we've defined them. There are elements that are universal across all of them that I believe is what makes a good villain. So this is uh, Logansworth. My yes. verdict. What was your name? On this, my my Kaisten Kai Kaistefer. Kaistefer. Yes, yes, Kaistefer. Indeed. Play it on me. So here are the four things that strictly need to be there in order to classify it as a mystery or at least these are the things that will make it a compelling mystery and what makes it so good number one we've mentioned this before a well-produced villain because yeah. at its heart mysteries do explore the innate sense of justice but also kind of as a duality thing explores what would make someone do a villainous thing yeah yeah um, sometimes yeah. it's not even it's like sometimes it's just as interesting to learn who the villain is but it it's almost just as interesting to learn why they are the villain yes and if you don't have a good mastermind behind your plot it's probably not going to be a good plot <laughs> you know like when you when you're trying to discover who did all this you know it's like it better like i don't know like it, the more you build it up, the more it's like this villain's gotta be someone special, you know. Like I need to know Indeed. how they did this, you know. Sherlock Holmes, uh, arch nemesis. I forget his name. Um, uh, I I don't. I haven't consumed very much Sherlock Holmes. Uh, I, I wouldn't know. Consulting the Google. His name, his name was L. Um, from Death Note. L. Hey, Death Note is also. Is that considered mystery? Uh, it's a, I would consider it. Because I actually thought about this earlier and I was like, Death Note is interesting because I feel like we are watching them solve the mystery. 
but like we already know everything. Whereas I do, there's I a lot of mysteries still that keep you in the dark. It. I would classify it as a mystery, but it's a thriller mystery that turns the concept on its head. One yeah. of the reasons I think Death Note is such a masterpiece of a story is because it tells it from the criminal's perspective. Yes, yeah. And it's really hard to do that. It's really easy to get that wrong. Yeah, like... And it's, yet Death Note yeah. plays it off so masterfully. It's hard to root for a villain as, like, to win, right? right? But they did it. <laughs> like, I don't know how... Well, it's like well, I, didn't, I didn't want like I mean, to win, but like I, he some he somehow he's a likable character. Like I don't hate him. Somehow. You find yourself debating why you're cheering for yes, him to exactly. get out of the situation. Yeah, you know, you just want to keep seeing him get away with it for some reason. Like, huh? Yeah, this makes no sense. So, a well-produced villain is the number uh, is one on this list of four. Number two is the hero to foil the villain must be equally mm. well produced okay at least in 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 it this kind of is more specific to what kind of subgenre you want because the hero doesn't necessarily have to be as good as a villain if you're writing a caper you know yes. kermit the frog is not going to beat out uh moriarty because that's there's such a difference in intellect power level etc cetera, etc cetera. You know, yes. So I think that's where it's important to determine which kind of genre of story you're wanting to do to make sure that your hero fits within that thing. And it's interesting. First, I almost wonder which comes first when writing a mystery. Is it the villain or is it the hero? Mm, that's interesting, right? Because I, I mean, maybe it depends. Um, I feel like the hero would probably come first because he's going to solve all sorts of mysteries. In my experience, most mystery shows, uh, the villain isn't prominent through the whole thing. He's like there for like an arc of the story. Um, while that's and then fair, like that's in, fair. In, in between, there's like smaller mysteries to solve. That's typically what I've seen, um, which is good. I think that's good storytelling to kind of. I mean, that's typically how it is for even like shonen with like fighting, uh, where it's like you don't want. Usually, there's not one villain for the whole show, but that doesn't mean there can't be. Um, but I just think typically the hero comes first. But, I mean, but you can write stories any way you want. Like we just talked about Death Note where the villain is technically the protagonist that you can do whatever you want. So indeed. indeed. Well, so that's that's the second. You you definitely have to have a hero that is a an excellent foil to the villain in some way. You could probably swing that around and you could definitely have a hero that somehow complements the villain. I'm sure that exists out there, but yeah. they're just just Definitely has to be a hero and a villain, yeah. Because the third element that makes a good mystery story is that appeal to the human nature of justice. Okay. Yes. Or of of what's morally right and wrong, and that is an entire different. I mean, morality is a concept that has been explored by humanity yes. the, for infinite amounts of unfathomable amounts of time and unfathomable amounts of ways. But either way. A mystery novel, at least within the story, will probably have some sort of maybe not a direct like speech to denote that, but will depict instances of really trying to show what is morally just in a yeah. society. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and I think that is so important to have because if you do, if you have, here's a an interesting thing. Uh, I'll be quick about it, but like it's a, it's a side note, if you will. I'll slap myself in the knee later. Or I'll give you a good. <laughs> <laughs> opportunity to slap my knee. No, no, you but, can you can do it. <laughs> you, uh, you're a pretty Disney, good slapper. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, Disney, in a lot of its arcs, have tried to make their villains very three dimensional and either twist villains or like this tragically misunderstood villain archetype thing, and in some cases, not really having a villain, and. That can be interesting in certain ways. I don't think they've done it right. I, I can give many examples that, of where they have done it right or where they haven't. But I think what, the, what ultimately ends up happening is you don't really understand what is wrong in, the, in this situation or who, who is really wrong. Because, and you can do that sort of well, but if you want to write just kind of a bare-bones mystery you're really going to want some sort of understanding of 
that the villain is doing something wrong and to not try to justify yeah. it in in all kinds of numbers of ways of like oh they're tragically misunderstood therefore somehow that justifies them blowing up a building or you know yeah wait we we haven't done our uh, episode on villains yet have we we have not okay dude because you talking about this is like we gotta we, we gotta talk about villains sometime um because you bring up a lot of good villains. points i uh because it, it, it's weird how much i like villains um, and we can talk about that when we actually do a whole episode on it. But uh, I do think that, like, you're right. Like, what what differentiates a villain from a like a a hero or a protagonist is the uh, like the villain is inherently doing something that's like morally wrong or like is considered to be wrong by society or whatever, right? Like they're they're doing something that is not right by normal standards. Um, but typically, I think why why I, I like villains is because they are confident and they're de- like just the amount of like they know what they want right and they have that like edginess or they're like the intimidation it's just like it's very impressive and it's you know it, it, it's there's that cool factor you know even though like what they're doing is not really something i would ever do in real life um but it's like it's also interesting to look into that world right like because as you said people are very intrigued by uh, that kind of that side of morality because most people tend to stay on the side that is like right and safer and all that stuff. Whereas in, there's that whole like the crime world and the the doing all of this terrible stuff is like something that people never get to see. So that curiosity of like actually being able to see what that's like or why when people do stuff like that, like what's what's going on in their head? You know, it's like that's it's it's so interesting. Um, so yeah, I, I agree with that. Indeed. The final thing that these stories uh, thank you for agreeing with by the way. You're an excellent uh, detective partner. Oh, thank you. In that you you're very agreeable. Thank you uh, <laughs> Kaisenworth. Was that it? Kaisenworth. <laughs> no, that is me. my that's new Logan's name. Worth. No, you were a uh, Kaisenfer. <laughs> that's it. That's Yes, indeed. <laughs> so the last thing that I think is always involved in a mystery story, it's ever present is a string of clues that helps the consumer piece together the answers themselves in some way. Yeah. uh Um, The breadcrumbs. The breadcrumb trail. And I'm I'm sure we could get into a whole nother topic. There's a a trail of crumbs on the table. No, no, there's a gun on the table. I I forget what it is. There's there's like a movie rule or something. I I forget. uh, My brother told me one time, but it's like, it, like, it's like in a movie, if the camera shows something, then it like, ha- if it's not used later, then it's like bad writing or bad cinematography. Yes, indeed. So, yep. Like that kind that of thing where it's is, like, if you, that is a filmography thing. Yeah. Yes. I, I forget what it's called. It's like something, but like, it's like the example was if like you see a gun on the table in a, in a movie, like it pans over to a gun on the table, then like that needs to be important later. Otherwise they messed up. Right. So, yes. So I'm sure, yeah, we could probably have a whole episode on how to, uh, how to insert clues well into a story. Yes, and because there can definitely be an oversaturation of clues. Or uh, I do think this is some you mentioned this before. Something that Maze Runner does wrong in my mind throughout the story. Uh, spoilers. Uh, they're in a maze. The characters are in a maze. They don't know why they're in a maze, but while they're stuck there, there's these creatures, and they're forced to kind of run through the maze each day, or they they can try to, and they're coerced to. It's like a strange human experiment. Either way, as soon as they get out of the maze, it, it there there's so many more questions onto what is happening. There's like yeah. half the half the planet is like sunburnt to death, and there's like other real zombies of people and some kind of virus is plaguing the world and the world's ended, but it's also not ended in some places anyway. So the, the problem I have with that story is it asks so many questions and then anytime it gives you a clue, it asks that clue makes you ask like four more questions, which is not always a bad thing. You, you want those for good twists and to keep your audience engaged. Right. But Maze Runner does it to such a high degree that by the end of the story, I end up still having 
like so many unanswered questions that yeah. that so the string the ratio of questions to clues to answer them is so far in favor of the questions that i it's almost like i couldn't i couldn't finish that story as a book i did watch the movies um at because they had that cool asian guy and i thought he was really cool i can't even remember his name now but he was a cool asian guy so anyway yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh the that's the issue that i felt like that story had is there's you definitely have to have a balance of clue to answer ratio yes because yeah. if you if you have not enough clues and too many answers, then you almost have to like write some sort of extra piece of story to explain that away in like a sub novel yeah, or that's not a sequel. Great. And if that's your in, if that is your intention to write a sequel, then then good. Sure. Yes. You're right. Yes, I agree. If if you if it's in your vision to have it like in three parts, or if you have a whole show planned out, like like Stranger Things, I think is doing it pretty well. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm sure that their development cycle has been interesting, but like having that vision of like, I have all of this planned out from the beginning, uh, which, you know, One Piece does that phenomenally. Um, it's crazy how in One Piece, it's like there are things from like the first couple episodes, first 100 episodes that are still unanswered. And then there are things from back then that are just now being answered, like, you know, a thousand chapters later, a thousand episodes later. Um, but it's crazy. That is crazy, you know. Um, but I, I had a question for you. If uh, are we ready to move on from the the yes, the, ask makes... away, good sir. So, Final question. So you know, before we end here, I I was curious because I thought about this um, in video games, right? Uh, and I'm going to pertain to single player predominantly. I'm not I'm, like there's always exceptions, of course. But in single player games, when you play through it, you know, you've got the narrative, you got all the, the gameplay, it's a fun time, and usually you don't stick around. Like maybe you'll come back to it uh, years later and replay it because it was fun. But I feel like what keeps people around, if you, if you look at it, there are these games that like, there are these massive fan bases for, right? Like, and like the game is like alive, even after it's come out, even after it's relevant. So games like Five Nights at Freddy's, games like Undertale, Games like, uh, you know, Dark Souls, Hollow Knight. Uh, there's so many games out there. There's there's plenty more. But I think what keeps these games alive is lore. And I was interested in if you think lore falls under mystery. Because I feel like lore is like these unanswered questions about these worlds. These, these mysteries about these characters and where they came from and what they did. And uh, do you think lore... Yeah, do you think lore falls under the mystery genre? I guess is what I'm curious about. Uh, I think it goes back to the lore. I think it can fall into like Five Nights at Freddy's. The lore is what did Purple Guy do that was so well, awful in, and in horrible. the early games. Like every game that came out, kind of added to it. Like as you said. They would answer some things and then leave more questions every game, you know, until but yeah. then like, it's just so crazy. Like how much FNAF has, in fact, I don't even think FNAF would be successful without its mystery element. I don't think that the lore, like, like the gameplay itself was kind of like a gimmicky thing that didn't last very long, you know, like it popped off and then, but then people stuck around because they were like, who done it, <laughs> you know? So sure. Well, I do think that like FNAF on its own could be considered a mystery story, sort of, in a really roundabout way. I do think FNAF as a story is kind of scatterbrained right. in a lot of ways. Yes, I, I, I uh, can agree with you on that. It's hard for itself to define itself in a specific genre other than like horror, maybe. Yeah. But it kind of goes back to that thing where I think there's a very important distinction on specifically the mystery genre of storytelling and having mysteries in stories. Yeah. So I, like yes. Elden Ring, I would consider not a mystery story, even though it has a mystery in it. Because you're okay. kind of like, I don't right. really understand what I mean, there's something to be said that firm software games tend to tend to high they're kind of a uh 
here's a ton of clues. So they're on the other spectrum of ratio where there's a ton of clues and very little actual yes, they, understanding of the lore to work off yeah, of. They very much don't answer anything. It's like, I feel like a lot of the lore in those games is like, I will say at this point, like the fans like put all the pieces together themselves. Right. Yeah. So, I don't. Um, yeah. So anyway, but like, so things, things like One Piece, I wouldn't consider it a mystery genre. It's not a genre. I, I just would consider yeah. it. I would consider it a story with an excellent mystery. After all, people are sticking around for I see, yes. thousand plus chapters, well, yeah. you know. So with, yeah, with a world that big, there are so many mysteries that at this point, the theory crafting for that show has like gone out the like it's crazy. Like if if you just go on YouTube and search like One Piece theories, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos. And the crazy thing is that most of them, when you read them, you're like, this could it this could be true because one piece is just so open-ended like that uh i i've yet to see a genre that has been able to match the amount of theory crafting you know i think fnaf is one of the only ones that comes to mind and i would say one piece actually has more going for it but you're right the genre is i mean it's not mystery right so to answer your question logan's worth i think it it lower can be a mystery but it does not necessarily mean that it's a in, in the mystery genre that's a very important distinction to make okay so i have a follow-up question excellent which uh, is i do see our our train coming up yes in yes. the distance so so horror games I, I didn't get to talk about them and i would love to actually do a whole episode on horror games but i think horror games a lot of them might fall under by by definition a mystery like in terms of narrative, right? Because, you know, what classifies a game genre is different than what classifies a movie or a show. Um, but I think horror genres narratively fall under mystery most of the time, you know, because as we said, I think Five Nights at Freddy's actually technically qualifies as a mystery a story because it does involve a crime, right? Like the, the, all of the mysteries in the game are about like these dead children and who killed them and, who the the suits and all who tampered with them and all that stuff but like when i think about um a lot of horror games i've played and the reason why i like horror games because i don't i'm not a huge fan of like uh you know being scared or whatever like i think it, it can be fun to be like oh i'm scared uh of this thing and it's like there's like a thrill to it but what what makes me want to play the horror game more like i get off and i'm like i'm thinking about it it's because Usually there's this overarching mystery. Like you get to the mansion or wherever you're going and like you have to figure out what the crap happened here. And you're like picking up all these things. And as you play through the game, you're, you're like drip fed this like really rich story of like all these tragedies that happened here. And like the villain or the monster in the mansion ends up being the like the person who used to live here or something, you know? And it's like there's always this story you have to uncover about the what happened to the people here and kind of the history behind it. So would you say horror falls under mystery? I would say horror is the, in most often times, I do think horror can be classified as its own. Well, actually, I don't know. I think that horror is like the highest exaggeration of a thriller. Okay. Thing. Interesting. Often, often it contains paranormal and thriller subgenre classes i just think that horror is kind of a more specific albeit very popular but just a very specific exaggerated version of these other uh subgenres i just feel like every horror thing has like this overarching mystery you know so... right so that's where i would actually classify most horror as a, a mystery story it's just like I said, it I feel like horror is kind of like the thriller okay. side of it. So just it's like, it's like when you, when you mix to when you like mix its paranormal. fullest extent. When you mix paranormal and you mix thriller together, you get horror, is what you're saying. Kind of. It, when you take paranormal and thriller and you you push it to its absolute highest extent that you can. Right, to explore I, I mean, the most kind of gruesome, most terrifying sides of the human mind 
I mean, because it's interesting. That exist. It's interesting because I, I feel like not all thrillers are horror, but all horrors thrillers kind of, you know. Yes, that's why I said um, horrors can fit within the subgenre of yeah, thrillers. Okay, but it's not necessarily its own subgenre. So it's kind of like I don't know why this analogy is popping in my head, but it's kind of like how uh, Shin Megami Tensei is like supposed to be the main series that Atlas makes. And then Persona, which is a sub series of Timigami since or Shimigami Tensei, kind of became more popular. Uh, so it's like in a way, horror, even though horror is like a sub genre of thriller, I feel like horror in and of itself is a bigger, more popular genre than like the sub genre that it came from. Yes, I would agree. Horror definitely is. It's a it's an interesting phenomenon which I would like to get into, but. As it stands, Sloganesworth, I think we might have some high evidence to convict so that we can understand why yeah, mysteries we, are so good. Do you think I we think we have it? solved that mystery. We saw, I think we did. I, uh, we may have to ask some of our cohorts, some of the, yeah. the people within the audience, our super sleuth detective agency, the, the story dive agency of detectives, the, what, what the you, stad, stads. Yeah. What, 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 yes, uh, yes, ads. Put down below if you think uh, if you think lore counts as mystery genre. You know, I don't know. Like, you never know, dude. There's mysteries all around. Uh, it. Indeed, indeed, there are. Uh, mm. But for the time being, Logansworth, I think it is our time to retire to our chambers and and sit at the fireplace and yeah. contemplate what we've discussed today. Yes. With oh. that being said, I do invite everyone here to do the following. Number one, hit the like button. It's it's a mystical button beneath whatever you're listening to that verifies to us that you enjoy our content. Yes, it really helps, guys. Give us a five star if you listen to us on Spotify. And yeah, just stay tuned for what's next week. Uh, it's a mystery. Mystery. It <laughs> truly is a mystery for another time. Yeah. Until then... <laughs> Story Dive takes its wonderful bow this evening. <laughs>